Tonight, I'm gonna to be taking a picture of one of the most famous deep sky objects in the whole night sky. It's been over three years since I photographed this target, which is really hard to believe considering how famous it is, but I'm super excited to finally revisit it. I've got some new techniques that I wanna try out for this shot. I hope you're ready to come along for the ride. The Andromeda Galaxy is the nearest major galaxy to our own Milky Way. It has over a trillion stars and it's absolutely massive. The galaxy is actually moving straight towards us at around 250,000 miles an hour. In around 4 billion years or so, the Milky Way will collide with Andromeda and will form a huge super galaxy. One of the things that I love saying about this galaxy to people that haven't heard about it before is that if you go to a really dark sky site and you look in the right direction, you'll see a faint fuzzy blob. That blob is the Andromeda Galaxy, and at that moment you'll be looking at the furthest thing you will ever look at with your naked eye. Since I live in the Bortle 9 light polluted skies of Chicago, I'll only be able to take a look at Andromeda through a sensitive camera with specialized filters. I'll get more into the details of the gear behind this shot in a second, but for now you should just know that this is going to be a more challenging shot than usual. Typically I'm able to finish my projects in one night, the night that I film, but I'm not so sure about this one. The Andromeda Galaxy is huge. Not only is it big on its own, but it's also very, very close to Earth, like I mentioned earlier. Since it's so big in the night sky, it actually won't fit inside my telescope and camera's field of view, but I have a way to get around this. The strategy that I'll be using tonight is to create something called a mosaic, and I'm super excited about this. A mosaic, in case you didn't know, is when you take individual pictures of different spots in the night sky all around a central point, and you blend them together to encompass a larger field of view. I don't have a different telescope or camera lens that I can swap out to to image the Andromeda galaxy, so I'm stuck with the gear that I have. So this mosaic will help me photograph the Andromeda Galaxy in its entirety. The camera I'm using to take this mosaic picture is my ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro. It's the same camera I've always used for my deep sky and planetary projects. I don't talk about it a lot, but the 533 has a square image sensor, meaning that all of the images it takes will come out as a square aspect ratio. You might have noticed this on your own if you've seen some of my past image reveals. Usually this is seen as a negative because it doesn't really fit right no matter what screen you're on. However, for mosaics, this is where I have an advantage. It's perfect for getting panels of the night sky and stitching them together. I'm gonna to be using more than just a camera to take a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy tonight, however. So let's see what else we're gonna be bringing out here. My ZWO camera will be attached to my Skywatcher 72ED telescope, which is riding on the EQ6R Pro. Nothing new there. As always, all of the gear I'm using in this video is gonna be linked in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. Sunsets in about Mm, less than 15 minutes now, so it's time to start getting set up. The good news is that all I have to do now is sort of just plop it here, and then uh, it'll be ready to go. Oh, and another thing. Yep, it's gone. They came and they cut it down a few weeks ago. It was two trees. It was one here that was sort of split down the middle and another one further back there, and it is totally gone. So in the span of like a month. I went from the south being my most obstructed direction in my yard to having a completely open view to the south. So all I'm picturing is just seeing the Orion constellation rising and setting there. But we have equally exciting things to worry about right now, the Andromeda Galaxy. So let's get set up and we'll go over the plan and everything like that. Let's do it.
up a drill by this point. Can't have a good astro vlog without talking about how the night's looking. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous fall night right now. We're just getting into October at the time of filming this, and this is exactly how I pictured it. It's in the low 60s right now, so it's a little chilly, but that's nothing compared to how it's gonna be earlier in the morning. We have a low of 47 tonight, which is the new record low of this season so far. So that's pretty exciting. Fall is in full swing and winter's on the way. The forecast for tonight looks amazing. No clouds at all, perfect temperatures, low wind. It all looks great for a great night of astrophotography. I don't know if you guys have had a similar experience, but whenever I have a good sunset before a night of astrophotography, the night of astrophotography tends to go well too. Here's the setup. Oh, ready to go. Well, actually, shoot, I need to plug in my stuff. I'm going to get my mount plugged in, hooked up to everything, and ready to go, and then we'll wait until it gets a little bit darker to pull our line and get set up. The Andromeda Galaxy is going to be above the horizon as soon as sun sets, so it's important that I get ready as soon as possible. So it's a little later now. The sun's officially set. It's been set for a while, which is, it's no big deal. A common theme you'll notice with these astro vlogs, and I can't help this, I'm not doing this on purpose, is that there's always at least one issue every night. You'll probably notice this with your own astrophotography. You'll expect a night to go perfectly smoothly and it never does. It's just never the case. We always fall for it. We always think it's gonna be a perfect night and it just never is. The issue today was that I set my stuff up too far back in the yard. I use AnyDesk to wirelessly communicate to my mini PC on the top of the telescope using my phone. And in this case, my setup was too far back in the yard. The position was just wrong or that it was not able to connect to the router at a sufficient speed. So it's not the end of the world, I can still image, but the connection to my computer is just very slow. But that has not stopped me from having an absolutely amazing time out here. It is dead quiet, there is not a rustle in the leaves anywhere, I have been loving it. Tonight is the new moon phase and it is dark. Let me show you guys around. We're gonna get to the Andromeda Galaxy soon, I promise. As you can see, it's perfectly clear can see all sorts of stars in there, especially looking straight up. Oh my gosh. It's just an endless void of space. This is my view to the west here from the Northern Hemisphere. You can see we have Cassiopeia up there. That was where we photographed the Wizard Nebula in that video. And then here, you see these three stars, one, two, three? This is the Andromeda constellation, right? Or at least the three brightest stars. I'm gonna attempt to show you where the Andromeda galaxy actually is and point it out to you guys. I'm gonna show you. Oh my God, you can see it. Okay, check this bright star. Follow it up a little bit to this bright star, right where the tip of my finger was, that bright star. A Little bit up and to the left of that bright star is another star. We're doing something called star hopping here. Do you see almost directly above it that faint fuzzy patch? That's the Andromeda galaxy. That is exactly what we're gonna be photographing. Let's see if you can see it even better there. Yup, you can definitely see it way better when I do that. absolutely incredible. I try to do that as much as I can where I actually show you guys where the deep sky object is in the night sky because I feel like a lot of videos that you see online of people photographing you know nebulae and galaxies thousands and millions of light years away if you haven't done it yourself you really don't know what you're looking at. You can't really comprehend that that is in 
your night sky. So I try to do that as much as I can. Even if you can't actually see the object, I try to point where it is in the night sky and explain that I'm just really zooming into that spot and uncovering that detail. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I didn't know that my camera was capable of actually seeing the Andromeda galaxy, so I'm gonna take a look at that again. But I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? It blows my mind for sure. I got the issue with my telescope being too far away from the router figured out. I don't think it was actually that. I think it was that I had too many background processes running on the actual computer. I opened Task Manager and saw that the CPU was at like a thousand percent or whatever, and I closed out a bunch of unnecessary things that were running, and the computer is much faster now. So all taken care of. So anyways, here is the view in Nina of the mosaic. You can see this black and white image is like the sort of framing assistant view of the Andromeda galaxy. These two squares here are the pictures that I'll be taking and blending together. Here's where they overlap right over the core. You can see if I go down, I have the option here under targets. You can add horizontal and vertical panels. All I did was I added one vertical panel. So you can see this is what it would be with one panel, just one, and then I add a vertical panel and it automatically figures out where they would be together and you can adjust the overlap. So I have it set up so that it would make about a 16 by nine aspect ratio image. Uh, with a good amount of overlap. It's just a super simple, easy way to set up your mosaics. I swear I'm not sponsored by Nina. I'm not, you know, I'm not asked to say good things about them or anything, but I really just do stand behind the software. It's just amazing. So after you've set up your mosaic in the framing wizard, you can uh, import it directly into a sequence, which is exactly what I did. I have it set so that I'll be taking 120 two minute exposures on each panel. That'll bring me to first light tomorrow. I probably won't have a uh, fully successful run on the second panel tonight. I'll probably be cut short by either sunrise or whatever trees get in the way, but yeah, this is the plan. So now that we know exactly what's happening, I'm gonna hit go. It's gonna unpark the telescope and we're slewing. So I will have a view of what uh, Nina is seeing I have it set so that we should be able to see the core of the galaxy in the sub-exposure. Oh, as I'm saying that, there it is. That's what we were seeing through the camera lens a few minutes ago. That is the core of the Andromeda galaxy, the closest neighboring galaxy to the planet Earth. That's amazing. I mean, that is so cool. Go into the imaging tab, take a look at that. PhD2 is gonna freak out for a minute. But like you can zoom in, you scroll down here, boom, that's a, the core of another galaxy. Absolutely amazing. And I think that's just a seven second exposure. Imagine over a hundred two minute exposures all blended together and fully calibrated. Oh, this is gonna be good. And this is just the first night too. I'm planning on getting multiple nights on this target. Whew. You know, I'm really excited. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. Your guys' continued support makes all the difference in how I feel about making these videos and just the channel's health in general. And I really appreciate every one of you for any form of support that you choose, whether that's subscribing, liking, commenting, or just watching the videos. I really appreciate it. I really hope that this video was able to give you something, whether that was a missing piece of knowledge that you needed for how to photograph an object using the mosaic planner on Nina, whether that was some extra confidence that things go wrong in other astrophotographers nights too and it's not just you that isn't having a perfect astro life or maybe you just needed some inspiration maybe you needed to just be inspired to go out and take some pictures of the stars or just look up at the night sky in the next clear night regardless of what specifically it gave you I hope this video just gave you something and with that being said I hope that this works because I am filming this whole video with the hopes that I'm able to successfully pull off this mosaic of a broadband target in Bortle 9 skies. But you guys know the drill. I hope you enjoy the image at the end of this video. And with that being said, I will see you on the next clear night. Clear skies.